Hi everybody, um, welcome back to UK Homestead Inn with me, Eve. Um, just going to talk about what I want to do today really. Um, I've got some, well a cockerel in particular, that I'd like to um, process. So we need to get him um, slaughtered, uh, plucked, gutted um, and ready for the pot. Or whatever, I, can't, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with him yet. So, um, Sean's going to do the deed for me, um, and then we haven't decided who's going to pluck. I don't mind plucking. I, um, he's he's not a meat bird. He's just a surplus cockerel from what I hatched of um, a batch of green egg layers. So he's a cream leg bar crossed with a bluebell, and a bluebell is a Rhode Island red crossed with a. Cuckoo Moran, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not, I, I'm not certain. So he's no, he's not a meat bird. He's quite big and um, be interesting to see what, what he, he kills out like. So um, yeah, so next time I see you, I'll probably be in the kitchen and um, going through how we, how we get it and see what he looks like. Okay, catch you in a while. Okay, so today we had to say goodbye to one of the cockerels. Quite meaty. Nice legs. Not a bad breast. Dry plucked by Sean. And leg, uh, feet ready chopped off. So what I'm going to show you today is how um, we've gutted them in the past. Not experts, but We'll do our best to show you. So, first things first, you chop your feet off at the joint. And then we need to um, loosen the, um, the guts basically. So, pinch a, a bit of skin from the neck. And cut through. Okay, I have to go sharpen my knife. So under here, you need to make a neck into the... Find is, I suppose, is esophagus and trachea. And cut through that. Okay, that all needs to come out because when you switch around to this end, we need to loose to be able to... Um, so we need to cut the windpipe and esophagus so that we can pull out the guts from the rear end and it's not attached to the top. Now we need to cut out basically the scent gland, which is at the back here. But what we do is we cut all around the bum there. And that allows us then to reach in. Turn it so you can see what I'm doing. Sometimes it's easier to make a bit of a split if you've got big hands. But I haven't got that big of hands. So what you need to do is you need to put your hand right up inside and then inside you just need to separate. Okay, so when you go up inside you'll be able to feel all like the... Um, connections from the cavity wall. Some of it can be quite tough inside. Just 
It's up to you what you do with the offal. Some people keep the livers to make pate. Mm -hmm. um, other people feed it to their dogs. So you can hear me, my dogs behind me talking, saying, Save me the liver. Kidneys. The liver. And the little heart. Kidney number two. And then you got your, <coughs> your intestines, which generally go straight in the bin with us. Some people like to take the neck off here. Um, what I usually do is, um, is take it off for the dogs, um, but we leave it on for now. So yeah, I mean it's not a it's not a proper meat chicken. It hasn't got that good of breast meat, um, but it's half decent for something that um, you know is just surplus to our requirements, basically. And I'll let you know what we do with it, cooking wise. Hi everybody, so a little update on the cockerel that you saw me um, get in in the kitchen. So cooked him last night, slow roast, um, fan 140 for, I don't know, about an hour and a bit and then half an hour um, at 180. Hello Palmer. The first uh, part was covered in foil, second part uncovered. This is Palmer's done. I'm sure you're remembering. Palmer! Palmer! My boy! My boy! Um, it was really nice. I was not expecting to be disappointed, I was expecting it to be a lot tougher than what it was. Breast meat was lovely. Um, leg meat, I like dark meat anyway on the chicken and the the leg meat was really dark it was so dark you could have mistaken it for, for lamb I suppose um, so I really enjoyed um, so did Sean so there was enough for um, myself and Sean and we had veggies as well obviously a bit of roast dinner um, and there was enough for sandwiches and I'll make a soup out of the carcass and pull anything remaining off and make some stock up as well. So all in all, fantastic. Um, we did a batch of Ross Cobbs last year and we were really disappointed with them. The birds were just, I don't know, they were, just, they were dirty. Even though we kept the pen clean, they were just sitting in their own, own manure and uh, they just were very nice to, to, um, to process and then, and then stomach, if you know what I mean. So we were really chuffed with um, the cockerel. Um, he had a good life. He wasn't a very nice bird. <laughs> but he had a good life. And um, it was, it's the nicest chicken that we've had in a while. So we've got a few more growing in here. I'll just show you. Same crosses. So we've got... Um, the, the black guys here and the white ones are obviously Sussex. Some of them are cockroaches, some of them are um, hens. Um, yeah, so we look forward to those. I've also got um, a light Sussex cockerel that's ready for, um, for processing. Um, I'll show you him now. There he is. Um, I was going to keep him, but I've noticed that he's got a crossbill, so we won't be breeding from him. The reason he's pink is because he and my breast cockerel managed to get together and have a bit of a squabble. As you can see, Napoleon, as he's called, has got a pink tail now because um, the Sussex pecked his tail feathers. But he's alright, he's just pink. Um, and Napoleon, in turn, 
decided to have a go at this fella's head. But he's fine now. Bit of purple spray. Um, yeah. So that's this is the all sorts of pen. We've got some cream leg bars. A cream leg bar there. We don't know what that is. Civilis Wyandotte. A lovely Sussex palette who I'm going to be moving to my breeder's pen. And there's another cream leg bar in there. And then these are my, so he's my breast cockerel, he's really nice, Napoleon. And then he's got two um, breast females in there called Jokey and Laffy, named by Tilly. <laughs> and then um, that, that lights the six palette is called Gary, again named by Tilly. I'm, I'm doing a bit of an experimental cross with, um, with the breasts and the Sussex. So. Yeah, I'll let you know how that goes. I'll be putting some in the incubator now in the next next couple of weeks. Catch you later. I'd also like to add that even though there wasn't as much meat on this bird as a commercial broiler, the meat was tastier, richer, and uh, you didn't need as much of it on your plate as a commercial broiler. So, in all, I think excellent value for money um, and fantastic feeling knowing that you've raised your own meat um, and knowing exactly what life it's had. Catch you all next time! Mm -hmm.